Being an astronaut might be the greatest job on or off Earth. Many people dream of getting paid to float freely in space high above the Earth. But being an astronaut isn't always a walk in the park. Space can be a hazardous place, one that humans are not naturally designed to inhabit. Once in space and free from the influence of Earth's gravity, weightlessness causes astronauts to lose bone strength and muscle mass. This is referred to as deconditioning. These effects grow over time, so the longer you're weightless, the weaker your body will be. Imagine spending six months to fly to Mars only to risk breaking your legs as you land. Luckily, there are researchers all over the world, including here at MIT, committed to keeping astronauts healthy and safe. Hi, I'm Aaron Johnson, a PhD student in the MIT Man Vehicle Lab, and I'm one of those people. To reduce the effect of astronaut deconditioning, we're looking at ways to recreate the effect of Earth's gravity in space. And one way to do that is with a human short radius centrifuge like this one. Centrifuges are very simple devices. A subject lays on his or her back and then the centrifuge is spun around in a circle. This causes the subject to feel a force against his or her feet. If positioned correctly and spun at a very specific speed, the subject will feel an acceleration at their feet identical to that of gravity. We call this a 1G force. But what is this very specific spinning speed we need? Some simple math will tell us. This is a top view of our centrifuge, which rotates in a clockwise manner. The radius of the centrifuge is 1.53 meters, which is, of course, this distance here. Now, when the astronaut is lying on the centrifuge, each body part is at a different radius. The head is here by the center, and the feet are all the way down at the centrifuge's edge. This complicates the math, so we're going to simplify things if that's okay with you. We're going to assume that the entire astronaut's mass is squeezed into a single point right here on the centrifuge's edge. That's called a point mass. When the centrifuge is rotating, our point mass astronaut has an instantaneous velocity in this direction. It's tangential to the circle and perpendicular to the radius. Now, if you've learned about velocity in school, you know that it's equal to the distance you travel, or d, divided by the time that it takes you to travel, or t. Let's look at one rotation of the centrifuge. The distance that the point mass has to travel is equal to the circumference of the circle here. That's equal to 2 times pi times the radius. The time that it takes the point mass to travel around the circle is called the period. It's indicated by the letter t. So, the instantaneous velocity of our point mass is equal to 2 times pi times r divided by the period. The magnitude of the point mass astronaut's velocity isn't changing because the centrifuge is spinning at a constant rate, but the direction is changing. When our point mass is here, the velocity is off in this direction. When the point mass is in here, the velocity goes off this way. And when the point mass is here, the velocity goes off in this direction. Uh, it's always tangential to the circle, but the direction is changing. Because the direction is changing, this means that we have an acceleration. Uh, this is one of Newton's laws. Named for Sir Isaac Newton, inventor of calculus and classical physics. Thank you. This acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration, and it always points towards the center of the circle. The word centripetal is Latin and comes from the word centrum, meaning center, and patera, meaning to seek, thus a center-seeking force. We're, we're good. Thanks. The magnitude of this centripetal acceleration is equal to the instantaneous velocity squared divided by the radius. We have to have something that changes this velocity and creates the acceleration. It doesn't just magically happen. We have to have a force that does the work for us. This force is called the centripetal force. By definition... The word centripetal comes from the Latin. We're good, we're good. We got this. By definition... By Sir Isaac Newton's definition. By Newton's definition, this force is equal to the mass of the point mass times the centripetal acceleration. Let's combine these two equations to see what we get. So 
So, we have an equation for the centripetal force, and we know that we want this to be equal to the weight of our point mass astronaut, or 1g. Weight is another force, and it's equal to the mass of the astronaut multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, or g. Here on the surface of Earth, g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's plug this into the equation and see what velocity we need. Now, this is interesting. It shows that the mass of our point mass astronaut doesn't have an effect on how fast the centrifuge needs to spin to get a 1g force. That really simplifies things for us. Unfortunately, we don't have a knob that can set the instantaneous velocity of the centrifuge's end, so it's not a feature of the motor we purchased. But what we can specify are the RPMs of the centrifuge's motor. It's a quantity called the frequency. It tells us how many spins the centrifuge makes in one minute. Luckily for us, the frequency is the inverse of the period t. So, let's take this equation, this equation, and this equation, combine them, and solve for the frequency. Time for some algebra! divided by 2 times pi times the square root of r. So, we know g, 9.81 meters per second squared, and we know r, 1.53 meters, so with these two values we can solve for the value of frequency. Why don't you take a minute to solve this yourself, so don't worry, we'll come back with the answer in just a minute. To get the right answer, we find that the frequency is equal to 0 0.4 spins every second. This is equal to 24.2 RPMs, or revolutions per minute. Now, I know that doing a lot of math isn't that interesting, and we have no way to know if we got the correct answer. That is, unless we experiment. What if we put an astronaut on the center and spin it up to 24.2 RPMs and solve what the centripetal force was? It'll let us use all the math we just did, and we'll find out if we got the correct answer. We have a centrifuge, now all we need is an astronaut. Why hello? Unfortunately, you're not a point mass, so we really can't use you in this experiment. But I brought a friend! Great! We can definitely use him. What's the weight of our point mass astronaut? 23 pounds. Excellent. Ready? Ready! Ready! Let's go! Here we are at 24.2 RPMs, which should be creating a 1G force that's acting on our full-size astronaut's feet and our entire point mass astronaut. Let's see how much our point mass astronaut weighs. We're very close. The difference between the actual and experimental weights is because our math assumes an ideal case and we don't take forces like friction into account. There's not a centrifuge in space right now, but when one's set up, it'll help astronauts keep their bones and muscles healthy and safe while in space. With a few side effects, I suppose. Are you okay?